Hey guys, welcome back. This is Faisal Khan. I'm the collaboration and contact center instructor at voicebootcamp.com. In this video, we're going to discuss about the architecture of Amazon Connect. Now, you already have the overview about what Amazon Connect is. It is an omni-channel cloud contact center provided by AWS. Now, architecture perspective, we're going to talk about the work, uh, workload layers of the Amazon Connect. Look at the different scenario and the deployment approaches, operational excellences, uh, security operations, and day to day administration, reliability. We'll talk about the performance, efficiency, and of course, the cost optimizations. Now, Amazon Connect is integrated with multiple telephony providers with redundant dedicated network path to three or more availability zones. Now, Amazon Connect is not, however, is available in every country in the world at this moment. It is only applicable in a certain region. But wherever they are deployed or available, they are deployed with a multiple telephony provider. One of the drawbacks of Amazon Connect as of today, let's say um, December 2023, is that Amazon Connect does not allow you as a customer to bring your service provider or telephony provider with you. So you're going to have to rely on the telephony provider that is provided to you by AWS. Now, in the future, it might change. But at this moment, this service is offered to you. Now, we're going to take their word that Amazon Connect is deployed with a multiple telephony provider so that if someone dials your telephone uh, or call center numbers, rest assured that AWS or Amazon team already ensured uh, that reliability and availability is taken into considerations. Now, what, uh, who are the carriers that is used by Amazon Connect? We don't know. Uh, we may not have any say in that what rate they offer that is something that maybe you have to negotiate with them at the time of when you're purchasing these uh, services because uh, obviously you know you're we are stuck with whatever the rate per country or per number that we dial uh, will be charged to us based on a rate table now um, it doesn't give you an, uh, a whole uh, a lot of options in terms of say hey i want certain cheaper rate for certain countries because I already have a provider providing that. But because depending on your spending power, depending on of how big organization you are, maybe you can work out a, some sort of, uh, I guess, pricing plan with, with AWS for that matter. Now, from a capacity perspective, uh, platform resiliency, as well as scaling perspective, all are handled by the Amazon team. So this is not something that you and I have to worry about it. The good thing about Amazon Connect is that we don't really have to worry about the operating system. We don't have to worry about the servers. We don't have to worry about upgrading or worry about the licensing aspect of it. It simply allows us to ramp up our deployment model uh, from a 10 agent to 10,000 agent without having to be worry about the management or the configuration of the underlying platform as well as the capacity of the telephone infrastructure. Now the workload, uh, it, is, it is basically a layered because we handle, as, a, as an administrator of the contact center, my job is to handle uh, whether the company can handle the number of calls that are coming in, but the actual workload of the platform or the solutions is managed by the AWS team. So workloads are load balanced across the fleet of telephony uh, media servers hosted at the AWS uh, data centers, which allows any update or features to be delivered to you without any downtime. Now, because for example, if you look at in this scenario, for whatever reason, let's say Amazon decided that they're going to work with some sort of connectivity issues, oops, uh, some sort of connectivity issue, and they're going to do an update on the carrier one. Well, while the carrier one is being looked after, um, all the communications that are coming to you as a customer will be handled by the carrier two and carrier three. So this layer of distribution help AWS team to ensure that if one area, uh, one aspect of the configuration is being upgraded or platform is being upgraded, it does not affect your uh, operation in general. So that's the type way that AWS basically provide 
you know, availability, uh, reliability and availability, availability. Now, if a particular component, as I mentioned in your data in the AWS data center, uh, or even the entire availability zone experience some sort of failure, then the affected endpoint is taken out of the rotation so that it does not affect your performance or anything else, which allows you to continue to provide a consistent quality of experience to your customers. Now, from a telephony perspective, as I mentioned, that telephony is biggest part of your contact center because that is basically the path where the call comes in and goes out. So when a voice call is placed to your Amazon Connect telephone number, uh, telephony layer will be responsible for controlling the endpoint that your contact customers calls to, to, to through their career across the PSTN into your Amazon Connect instance. Now keep one thing in mind, that you're not the only customer of the Amazon Connect. There are thousands of other customers around the globe who are using Amazon Connect. So the Amazon Connect team or the AWS team has to ensure that any call coming into your phone number belongs to like the company, the endpoint and customers, that that call passes through the right telephony uh, layer, right courier into your right instance. So these are some of the configurations that are done, which is beyond the scope of your, uh, my, our capability. Now, throughout the Amazon Connect interface layer, which is basically distinguished between which instance the call has to go through, uh, which uh, telephone carrier has to pass through, you can then configure things like your outbound caller ID, assign contact flows, IVR, and to a particular phone numbers, you can enable things like enabling media streaming, enabling call recording, and of course, you have the ability to claim a phone number without any prior traditional telephony knowledge. That means you don't have to worry about setting up a call manager or a voice gateway to send the calls to Amazon Connect. Now, to give you an example, let's say if you are deploying a contact center with Cisco platform, whether if you're using UCCE or UCCX, well, you can set up the contact center all you want, but the call will not come into those platform unless you have the call manager or a call coming in from telephony provider to a voice gateway to a CVP server into your contact center environment. So the prior work that has to be done is being taken care of Amazon Connect. So this telephony part of it is something that you do not have to worry about. You don't have to worry about translations. You don't have to worry about uh, mapping the numbers. Uh, you don't have to worry about whether the number is 11 digit or 10 digit, right? Everything is taken care of by AWS team. So the call somehow will then come into your Amazon Connect interface. From there, our job is to map that call to appropriate contact flow so that the IVR can then take over that perspective from that point onward. Now, additionally, when you are, if you're migrating the workload from your existing on-site premise infrastructure into, let's say, Amazon Connect, you have the options to port your existing phone numbers by opening a support kit with AWS team. Now, before you do that, you want to make sure that your entire organization, entire contact center performs the way exactly it was before, uh, before you do this switch over. So technically, what's going to happen is, AWS will provide you a temporary phone number. You will test that phone number with everything on your contact center uh, you know, platform, make sure that everything works. Then you, you provide, a, um, I guess, uh, some sort of uh, documentation to the AWS team to request them to move the port number to your contact center. Now, there might be a little bit of a, a, a downtime in terms of the moment of the numbers being moved from your uh, platform into uh, this. So what you can do is that your, uh, let's say you, you decided that you're going through the process, AWS team told, tell, told you, okay, we're going to actually do the cut over on so-and-so date. So between that moment, there's a possibility that call could be coming in and it may not end up going to the right contact center. So what you can do is that you can point that old number or forward the calls from the old number into the temporary number that is provided to you by Amazon Connect. Now, once that part is taken care of, you have been uh, transferred or your number has been converted, then you can disable, uh, not converted rather, 
ported into the new contact center, you can then disable that feature, uh, forwarding features. Now, Amazon Connect interface, which is the web interface that allows you to access your uh, platform. So for example, this, uh, when you go to this right here, this is your web interfaces, right? If you click on this, it will take you to your Amazon Connect pay dashboard where you will log in uh, with your username and password. From here, you can then configure all sorts of activity uh, configurations that you can see related to your contact center. Now, there are two layers of configurations when you're coming to an Amazon Connect. Of course, you got your access URL, which gives you access to your uh, configuration layers of your day-to-day -day, uh, Amazon Connect. But then there is another called instance configuration or instance alias. So if I click on this little uh, instance name, VVC007, uh, it's going to ask me to log in. So when you log in, uh, this is going to be more like a, a system related configurations. Okay. Now you notice here there are some uh, new new configurations like a third party application. If you click on this, there are some third party application. We'll talk about it later, and you can add some application that you might have. Um, you can go back to your uh, configuration related to your Amazon Connect instance. So first thing you'll see that you got the telephony uh, uh, configuration. So some information about how uh, do you want to allow inbound call or do you want outbound call? So if your contact center is only for outbound, let's say if you are a, a survey company or a marketing company, right? The only thing you're doing is just making an outbound call. Nobody can call back, uh, call you back. You can disable the inbound capability if you want to. If your contact center is only for inbound but not outbound, you can check uncheck the outbound options. You don't want to uh, if you, if you, there's no need, reason for you to make an outbound call, maybe it doesn't make sense to t have this feature on at all. Now, one of the things that you want to do, you may want to enable things like single sign-on authentication. You may want to customize your desktop applications using you know Amazon Connect Stream APIs. You may want to enable uh, chat web server hosting on Amazon Connect. So many functionalities can be configured through the Amazon Connect interface as well as through the API configurations. Now, any contact center that you deal with, whether it is a Cisco or a VIA, call flow, where as the call coming in is handled through some sort of component. And often this component used to be known as a scripting in many context on-premise contact center platform, whether it is UCCX scripting, ICM scripting, CVP scripting, Avaya scripting, etc. But most of the cloud platforms, such as Amazon Connect, WebEx, they call it, rather scripting, they call it a contact flow, which is basically an IVR layer. So the contact flow is the primary architecture vehicle for your contact Amazon Connect, and it serves as a point of entry and a first line, first line of communication with your customers reaching out to you for your help. Now, after a customer contacts the Amazon Connect instance, a contact flow will control the interactions between the client or engage with the client and the uh, platform itself. Now, it could uh, do many, thing, many tasks. For example, it could connect the call to an agent. It could put the call, uh, provide a menu-like uh, application to the user. You can call and Lambda functions to execute database access. You can access resources within your VPC or behind your VPN. You can call AWS services like a pinpoint, SMS, uh, to send uh, SMS information. You, the customer can talk to Lambda, uh, AWS LEX for, I don't know, um, command structure live uh, activity. Like for example, let's say I want help like an instead of pressing menus. So many functionalities can be achieved by creating a from a basic to very advanced uh, scripting. So this is where we're gonna spend. Now Voice Bootcamp, for example, have a dedicated videos focusing on just a dial, uh, call flow. We have a self-study kit that focuses on developing uh, from a basic to advanced uh, Amazon Connect uh, call flow. So take a look at that at uh, elearning.voicebootcamp.com. All right, now 
agent workstation layer. This is the layer where the agent will use to log in uh, AWS. The agent workstation, however, is not managed by the AWS. Now, what do I mean by agent workstation? Agent workstation means a PC is used by, used by the agent to log into Amazon Connect. Now, the call contact control panel, which is considered to be the agent desktop, uh, web interface desktop, Basically, it's a web browser, but in order, in order for the user to log into the web browser, they need some sort of PC, laptop, or a mobile devices, or even tablet devices. But that part of the hardware, which follow, falls into the agent workstation layer, is not managed by the AWS. It's rather managed by you and me as an administrator. It consists of any physical equipment or a third-party technology, services, or even endpoint that facilitate your agent's voice data and access to the Amazon Connect interfaces. Now, agent will use a web interface to communicate with your Amazon Connect interface by using, for example, a contact control panel, CCP panel, uh, which will be connected with Amazon Connect. Now, you want to make, when you do have a situation like that, there are many things that you have to look at. For example, the network path, agent handset, if they're going to use a headset versus they're going to use a browser to communicate, whether they're in a virtual uh, environment, whether, whether they have the right operating system. For example, if you're using Unix-based operating system without any GUI, you may not have an agent desktop. Um, you have to look at endpoint security like firewall, um, host-based firewall, corporate firewall, and all the network within your within your environment should be configured uh, with a proper QoS to handle the voice call across the internet. You also need to look at your ISP because what happens if your internet goes down? What happens if the agent who's working from home only relies on one single point of failure? So those things has to be looked looked into when you are working with the agent workstation layer because chances are that agent probably working from home or different countries or maybe different locations, they need a reliable connection to the AWS in order to provide uh, proper services. Now, another thing that you need, you can focus on is the metric and reporting layer. Now, this is the in layer which basically uh, include the component that is responsible for delivering, consuming, monitoring, alerting, and of course, processing real-time and historical metrics. Now, no contact center in the world is complete without monitoring and reporting capability. This includes all native and a third-party component which are responsible for facilitating the processing and the transmission, storage, retrieval, and of course, visualization of your real-time reports. So using a dashboard, you can actually see what is happening with your call centers. You can access all the call recordings. You can schedule reports. You can contact records that you can export it to, let's say, AWS database like Redshift, um, DynamoDB, uh, Athena, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this man monitoring and metric layer basically gives you the real-time dashboard that you need to kind of... Um, you know, monitor your contact center platform. All right, so this is the uh, first part of our architecture series where we talked about the workload. In the next chapter, we're going to focus on the deployment. All right, until then, see you next.